Andatzen. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Channel Anderson. Today, I'm here with some special guests from Creative Steel, Josh. We got Josh here with us. Jess is behind the camera right now helping Josh. us out. Josh and Jess came all the way from Oregon to uh, help me put some engine mounts in the C36. You guys know that I follow the channel. Actually, uh, we were just talking about it, historical purposes. The first ever video I did on the channel was putting the Creative Steel engine mounts into the trusty old C55. They've been flawless. It has the transmission mount in that car and I'm running the transmission mount in the E420 as well. Couldn't choose anything else but Creative Steel for the C36. New design, they are the uh, Lima vibe. Lima, Lima vibe. vibe. Yeah. So for those uh, NVH fanatics uh, or you know picky people for vibration purposes, that's what this video's purpose is going to be: is not only installing the mounts, but testing a before and after of how much vibration the stock mounts produce, and then what it's like afterwards putting the Lima vibes in, and uh, just seeing where everything kind of shakes up to be. We'll let Josh kind of explain more in depth as we go. Follow along with us, and we'll give you the details as we go. All right, guys. So before we uh, dive into things, wanted to show you guys for proof and just for documentation purposes and the journey the c55 is actually still on uh what would be your guys version uh, two you said technically but kind yeah. of v1 for mercedes yeah, yeah. so these are rebuildable the square shaped mounts and these have been on i'll have to look back at the video date but i can pop it on screen should be around 2018 so these have been on for probably five years now they're still like the day i put them in so we got those and just proof for you guys they've been on for a long long time but those have now turned into this so i'll let uh josh kind of unbox yeah. us and let us see what exactly we got here so we try to pack them all uh you know good foam and and uh you yeah, know packaging a1 for sure yeah so look so, at those things, you guys. Number one, of course, beauty is not everything in terms of design, but they are definitely beautiful pieces. You can tell there's some thought put into these. All right, so talk to us a little bit, a little bit about the design and what we got going on here. Well, I guess what would started um, us going down this rabbit hole of this design was uh, seeing some kind of like what other guys were doing in, in some of like the machine work they seeing some guys having full billet engine mounts We're like man that's that's really cool and we have the machines to do that like why don't we do that and then it kind of turned into while that design down there is a good design and, and no problems nvh is similar to what most polyurethane engine mounts are you know yeah. it's kind of a tried and true design the way that those so when we made the alima vibe we really wanted to focus on trying to limit the vibrations as much as possible yeah and uh you know polyurethane as just a material versus rubber it will transfer more vibration that's just kind of the, the nature of it it's really hard to get a polyurethane mount to vibrate you know the same as a rubber mount yeah. um, especially when they fill them with liquid you know so we, we want to really try to focus in and d design something that, that that had similar vibration levels as oem and so after man countless countless just design changes we came up with the alima vibes they use the exact same polyurethane as those so it's there's nothing different a complete different shape complete different you know characteristics mm -hmm. and uh we learned a lot through the journey and uh you know now we feel real confident that we yeah. we have a good understanding of how to make a engine mount out of polyurethane and make it not vibrate and that was our that's our big goal everybody's you know i don't want to put polyurethane on it because it's going to vibrate we're trying to change that now so change the narrative all right so taking a closer look here at the mounts and josh will kind of walk us through just kind of the overall design you know we consider like this the pin um that's that's the part that kind of moves up and down um the housing and a, and a base another cool thing i guess with the alima vibe we designed this to be a design that would be somewhat universal so what i mean by that is we didn't want to create a mercedes specific uh engine mount we wanted to create an engine mount that can fit any car that will actually have the space yeah so you know you can buy an alima vibe for we sell them for like cadillac ctsvs we have them for corvettes we're kind of growing that that and and you know the, the housing will be the same but basically yeah. all we do is change how it mounts on the change, top yeah. how it mounts on the bottom but all the inner workings are basically the same yeah i was gonna ask you guys too because like on these the v1s if you guys are familiar 
there was a street or race bushing, but on these, are they all the same or you still offer that or? Um, they're all the same. The reason why they're all the same is that the way that they work is that they pretty much limit the vibration just at an idle. But if you really put the power down to them, they do have like internal stops. So if you were to really like, you know, have some high horsepower, um, it'll become like basically a solid mill. Yeah. But in terms of like vibration, you know, that you wouldn't want a si solid mount on, on vibration. But what happens is if you're sitting at a stoplight at idle, the RPMs are down, your frequency is really low, and that's where you're gonna see the, you know, vibration, the harshness. Now you get that frequency a lot higher, that starts to become more of, say, a sound, uh, you know, the frequency is a lot higher. So yeah. at that point, when you when you floor it, you got power, this thing goes down. Um, if you've got the power to, to completely get this thing on the bump stop, at that point, your RPMs are so high yeah. that the vibration you're not gonna you're not gonna feel it because you the frequency is up there, yeah so. everything's changed yeah yeah you also got the trans mount in here if you guys saw yeah. which also a really cool design and uh you guys made that one uh, even easier to rebuild versus right. the old old style had the like c-clip in it i think that's what i still have that one in the c55 actually that josh was nice enough to make me a custom durometer uh bushing yeah, when i switched yeah. to the manual because everything in this car is kind of solid so these work phenomenally with uh, the automatics like when i put just that mount in even with the creative steel mounts for the engine the car felt very close to stock i mean everyone's gonna be a little different like you said as far right, as what right. they can tolerate but for me it was definitely tolerable and um it's been awesome even with the stiffer durometer with the manual transmission but these ones are improved yeah. upon and Still using, is that like a 60A or? That or is a 60. 60, okay. Yeah. These are For about a 75. Another thing I should say too is that uh, we also wanted to build them this way because having the CNC machines, it was a lot easier for, for manufacturing for us because we can deburr all the corners, everything. Yeah. These things, they're, they're like pretty much 100% made by us. So anything metal, the, the only things we don't do on these is we don't make the screws or any of the yeah, hardware, yeah. and we don't do the anodize. Yeah. Everything else, even the foam is laser cut by us. So in I mean, um, and we don't make the box. Yeah. Uh, we don't make the foam, but we do laser cut it. So it's yeah. like everything you see here is, is, is pretty much made by us, even the engraving uh, uh, on the anodize. Yeah. So. And all of it looks great. It's all very clean. This is, this is exactly the same, I mean, better, even better level of quality, but this is why I kind of came to love them, not only are they good people? And I could tell that right away from interacting with them even way back when, but the quality speaks for itself. You guys get these things in hand, like nobody else is touching these. That's, I'm just gonna say it for myself. The quality speaks for itself of these mounts. And then when you combine that with the performance quality, yeah, it's next level. So there's no other choice in my opinion. I might be biased, but I don't think so. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, they're just an awesome, awesome thing to have. and quality speaks for itself you guys will see yourselves but anyways tangent all right guys so now that you saw the mounts you saw the proof of the history of these being in the car it's also in the e420 now next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the nvh machine and tangent as well for the video but we finally got the four pot brake setup all situated so we're gonna get this thing on the ground for the first time in a while start it up with the stock mounts, I'm sure they're probably the original mounts. And uh, yeah, we'll see what it's at and then see where it goes after we do the work to swap out to the nice Alimavibe mounts. So see you guys uh, in the process. All right guys, well we're in between working on the C36. We got it on the ground and uh, gonna start doing some testing. But I also wanted to mention, Josh drove up a pretty cool car here today <laughs> or yesterday actually, but this is your brother's C63, yeah. it's a 2010 you said? Yeah, 2010. Yeah, this thing's sweet. So we won't do a whole feature <laughs> for the video, but it was worth mentioning at least. Yeah. Uh, we went for a drive yesterday and it was following me and I was driving the ML63 and looking in my rear view, it made me want one really bad, so. Well, it, it might eventually <laughs> be back on the channel, you know, one day. You hey, know? fingers it, crossed it, right now. Speaking into existence again, this can be the one we manual swap, guys. It needs to be done sometime, so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, just want to throw it out there real quick. We'll get back to business. All right, guys, the C36 is alive after a while. Uh, we're going to take it for a quick cruise, and then uh, we'll come back, do our MVH test, our initial one, and we'll pull it back into the garage, and uh, 
go through our mounts and then come back and do the test again. So we'll fill you guys in on the details as we go, of course, but first time it's uh, been driven in a while, so I'm excited to have it out. All right, guys, we made it back from our cruise and we got a, uh, it's called a Pico. Yeah, it's a Pico scope, uh, Pico scope. or MVH. Right, tester. so this is our NVH tester. Uh, we'll test it, I guess, just sitting here idling, and then we can do it like on startup. Anyways, we'll get things set up and uh, catch you guys in a second. But I'll tell you guys, it was fun driving this after sitting for so long. And also, I'll make a video for it, but we threw the 10 millimeter spa spacers on it, and uh, looks quite good. Fits perfect, so. Yeah, we'll get this thing set up. Catch you guys in a moment. All right, guys. I'm sitting here. I'm in the backseat just to give you guys a good view of what Josh is doing, but he'll uh, kind of explain, and you guys will be able to see on the screen here too. Yeah. So uh, basically, we got a accelerometer um, down uh, magnet to the uh, seat frame. Um, we do it there just because that's where you feel the vibration, and it's kind of for us kind of pointless to put it on the uh, the engine itself. So we want to see what you feel. Um, as you're sitting in the car, so yeah. Um, yeah, we'll start it up and see what we get. So that was part of it, and then uh, so we can kind of we'll we'll drag this out here. Really, what we pay attention to mostly is the drive being because that's what you're gonna feel you know when it's in park I mean you can kind of feel it, but um, drive it obviously as you saw it kind of gets a little bit more the vibration goes up so let's see we're gonna do an average um, we can do auto scale let's zoom in on like our peak here with that we are sitting at on average at 29.7 Hertz okay. um, which would be the uh, frequency Milligy, we're getting 12.2 millijes, which kind of leads me to believe these mounts might be bad. Um, that's that's quite a bit, actually. I'm assuming that they're original, to be honest. So, yeah, yeah. That's quite you know quite a bit, I would think. But like I said, I have no experience on these engines. Generally, the you know inline six is pretty smooth. So. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's pretty high. That's pretty much what we do is is get it uh, you know the average over this uh, time of you know uh, 20 seconds or so. That would be in in drive you know like if you were sitting at it like a stoplight yeah we're just going to show you how sensitive this tool is so right now you can watch the graph i mean it might have some spikes in here but it's basically you know cars off it's it's pretty much no vibration and just moving the gear selector over and letting the spring move it back oh yeah so it's it it'll it you know you can see it every little thing you know um so it, it's pretty it's very sensitive i mean without any vibration right now registering you know like micro g's any little yeah so it's you know you're it's it's very very sensitive all right yeah let's do the engine time mounts. to swap the mounts yeah all right guys catch you back in the garage with tools in hand the more familiar place i'm also happy because i have the certified engine mount master for uh <laughs> i want to say certified <laughs> okay uh, uncertified unofficial but i mean how many sets of engine miles you feel like you've done at this point uh are we counting like same car the test just engine mounts uh, overall whew. like thousands hundreds maybe maybe reaching about a thousand maybe yeah, okay we, yeah you know, so i've done engine mounts on the same car just testing different things uh, five <laughs> times in one day yeah yeah. So I've done C55, the ML55. That's really it. So yeah, <laughs> that's first, a first generation CTSV, second generation CTSV, third generation CTSV, E55. So let's just say it's C55 998 uh, <laughs> to two. So I'm glad to have him around. We can figure this out. Luckily, too, knock on wood. But uh, the M104, it's pretty easy to access everything, right. so. And there's always something to be learned. Yeah, always something to learn. So, anyways, we'll catch you guys in the garage.
get to, but not as easy as I thought. All right. Okay, guys, we are uh, in the middle of it. We had to make a tool run already. <laughs> so we were missing the right uh, 17 to try to get on top of this one over here, but we shall prevail, hopefully. <laughs> but I'll probably time lapse you guys for most of this part and we'll catch up afterwards. guys Josh got the uh, passenger side cracked which was the stubborn one at first got from the bottom side after we hit a little WD-40 on it and this better angle uh, still got to get the driver ones cracked that was uh, quite tight but we also WD-40 that one and hopefully our tools will uh, come to work out all right guys we're moving on to the bottom bolts the 13s the top one, I don't know if we mentioned, but it was 17s. And uh, they definitely put up a fight. It looked like there was some type of like anaerobic sealant or some type of glue or Loctite on uh, one of them for sure. Probably on the other one as well, but we'll see once we lift the motor up to get it out. But yeah, we're making progress. Josh is having fun. That's it, man. <laughs> This feels weird that I'm videotaping somebody right. else work on my car. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm appreciative. <laughs> what, do, what do Mercedes mechanics get paid? <laughs> right. 120 an hour or something like that? Make sure you guys show them some love in the comments <laughs> and uh, go visit their website for sure. You won't be disappointed. All right, something just fell out, guys. <laughs> Looks like a very, very tired. Oh, God. Oh. Oh no. Damn! It's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think we filmed it, but Josh was saying earlier that the NVH we recorded for you guys in the car was the highest number you guys had seen, right? Or like yeah, way yeah. higher than what it should normally, have been. Normally, you know what we see, I mean even, uh, you know, normally most engine mounts probably about like a four milligy um, up to a five. Um, I think we were recording like a 12, yeah, so, so yeah. Not good, guys. So, <laughs> not only did it need it, but it's also getting a nice upgrade over, uh, even if they were factory new ones, still a better upgrade. It doesn't even have fluid in left, oh, left in it, barely. Like it looks like it's smoking for a second. What the heck is that? Uh, well, they're, they're hot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I saw some steam coming yeah, off there. Yeah. All right. All your fluid, man. Well, bye bye hydraulic mounts. Hello, Limo Vibes. All right, passenger one is out. Josh is kind of pushing the motor over. I got it from the bottom side, from the back. But this one is uh, at least in better shape than the driver's side, but. Which is surprising, because normally the passenger side's the one that's Yeah, it's beat up. Yeah. But... All right, moving on. All right guys, so looking at the Illumina Vibes next to the OEM, you can see pretty, uh, pretty dang similar shape comparison, so. See how it fits. One thing to uh, mention as well, we didn't talk about it earlier, but these weren't necessarily designed for this uh, motor. So it's kind of testing out to see if they would, yeah, to verify that they would fit, but you were pretty sure, like you said. Yeah, that. it's it's more of like this style was kind of like, they've used this like general shape for, for quite a bit of different vehicles. Yeah. But um, this one is a little bit unique and uh, the subframe is a little bit different yeah um or like the cross member so um that's what we're kind of just verifying fitting yeah it, make sure that they will also work with this one so so also a learning process yeah. but yeah it so, looks like it fit fairly think, well maybe yeah. a bit of adjustments but yeah. nothing much yeah so should be uh, good to go we're, we're testing out the driver's side right now just because it's a little easier to see and then we'll move over to the passenger side I'll show you guys once it's in there obviously but that's where we're at for now all right, guys, we are uh, looking at the motor mounts in the car. One thing we're concerned about on one side, on the, this side they tighten up right now is if the bolt might be too long, but we'll find that out shortly. But uh, yeah, we'll check back in in a bit. All right, guys, we are officially completed. Little man's joining us right now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, first startup. 
And then to make it apples to apples, we did cruise the car around earlier to get it warmed up before we did the initial NVH. So we'll do the same kind of loop and then uh, come back and do the NVH comparing. Good job, by the way. You guys say thank you again. He sac sacrifice his arm. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Glad to be at this part and uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Alright guys, I can tell you straight off the bat, it feels way smoother on startup than it did for me as a driver, having started as many times as I have now, so that's a good sign, but uh, yeah, we'll go cruise it, get it warmed up, and then we'll check back with you guys for the MVH test part two. Alright. Alright guys, we're just cruising right now, going for the second test run, but so far, without uh, our testing to prove it, the car feels real smooth. I don't think anyone will be in here and be like, what kind of engine mouse do you have? I think they would just think it's normal, so it's pretty cool. I think my mother-in-law was making you guys sandwiches, by the way. I don't think you're going to get out of here without food. <laughs> <laughs> Guess so. It's kind of the thing we joke about. We're like, we don't know how the hell we made these engine mounts so good. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it doesn't vibrate in it and it doesn't move. It's, like, it's how does that, that even make sense? That right? box full of prototypes. And yeah. Stuff. And then, three years. All right guys, we're in the testing phase. We got a third party tester to verify um, our findings here. Like I said, we're probably just gonna really pay attention to like what was, uh, what the vibration and drive. Yeah. Um, that's what's got the most load. And it's not a really good fair comparison because as we found out that the, o the OEM ones were, you know, blown. So, um, you know, it's not a, uh, you know, you're comparing a brand new set of polyurethane to blown engine mounts, yeah. but uh, let's see here. Make sure we get the full peak. Yep, that's a peak. So um, obviously the, the hertz, the frequency is gonna always be the same. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it kind of depends, uh, you know, how the engines run, but frequency is always the same just because the, you, you know, the engine uh, it six produces cylinder produces, exactly, yeah. It, yeah. And so um, we were at 12, something millijis i'm not 100 percent. don't remember exactly and we're at 2.64 2. 2. yeah oh my so God. <laughs> so uh and it is linear so uh it's yeah like i don't even can't even do the math for it it's it's a lot less <laughs> yeah so, wow that's impressive yeah so and uh that's with, with the little one jumping around, know. you know. Maze is jumping around in here, so. But it's it's a uh, you know yeah it's it, like you said unless we we're really trying to you know hit a certain number. Yeah. Um, what yeah. do you see for uh, like typically for a good set of stock engine mounts versus like what do those show up as? Um, uh, like I said, I would I would say we've never really done uh, one of these this an inline. Remote, yeah, um, yeah. An inline engine will be usually a lot more balanced. Um, I would. I would say probably close to this, you right, know, yeah. um, two and a half to three. Yeah. Um, we typically see on V6s, uh, V8s, um, generally about four to four and a half. Mm. Um, so, and then when we put our engine mounts, like when we're saying, okay, they're a little bit, they will vibrate a little bit more than um, factory. We're talking like 0.5 millijis, yeah, uh, maybe you know, and and, and it's usually kind of like what you you see is like yeah. it's not enough to really know the difference. Like yeah. we we have some guys that you know, hey, I put your engine mounts in, um, you know, they vibrated uh, a little bit more than factory. Yes, but that might be kind of uh, just in their in their head, you know. Yeah. Like you know, we've we've kind of done this to. to um, show the actual data yeah. um, and uh, like I said this is not a very fair comparison because when you have blown engine mounts it's it, you know the, as you saw they're 12 millijis I mean that's that's you know um, I mean I think of, it, it still speaks volumes of just like 
you have a polyurethane engine mount and we'll show you guys in a second brake torque in the motor it hardly moves and you're you're hardly getting anything registering in here so like right that yeah. alone even if yeah the oems were blown so those are kind of skewed but yeah this yeah. speaks for itself which is pretty yeah. awesome and that's and i think you know that's the thing is some people want just a, an engine mount that lasts and so, um, you know, they want to go polyurethane route. That way it'll last longer than the OEM. But then there's people that don't want the vibration of a polyurethane yeah, yeah. mount, so they go with OEM because they don't want the vibration. Yeah. And so we kind of uh, found a good happy medium with no vibration or, or similar vibration OEM. Um, also last, um, but then you also have that aspect of guys are like, well, you know, if it's soft, how much is the engine going to move? Because yeah. I want that, you know, performance aspect. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's kind of uh, like I was saying, or they, yeah. they're pretty, pretty stiff. So, all right, guys, we're going to brake torque the motor real quick. You guys will see the little movement that it does have, but I'm just showing you guys on camera. Hey guys, well thank you so much to Josh and to Jess on the camera right now from Creative Steel. We're officially uh, mounted up correctly. So you guys learned a little bit of verifying that it fits on the car. Right, right, yeah. And just overall, huge thank you for me, Josh and Jess for coming all this way. And Josh, working on the car for me. It was a weird experience watching somebody else turn the wrench, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was cool. I'm very thankful. So. Awesome, and the car feels great, which is bonus on top. So. Yeah. yeah, you got engine mounts. My arm hurts, and I gotta drive <laughs> a long way. Yeah, they got a lot of check home. So, oh, one more thing before you guys go. Special gift. Okay, they were talking about this is one of Jess's cars that she liked, but I think it's for both of you guys. Fitting for both of you guys. Oh, oh thanks, buddy. <laughs> oh, nice. Those are awesome. It hot feels hot. Those are awesome. 500 E's. I got my shiny <laughs> Now these ones I can afford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright you guys, well thank you so much for watching as always. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget, go check out Creative Steel as well. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>